Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 43 of the platform specific series of my 68000 assembly programming tutorials. And the platform we're looking at today is the X X68000, and we're looking at sound again. Now, we looked at sound on the X68000 once before. We wrote the Chibi Sound driver, which was a simple driver for very basic beeps. It was an example way of making a simple sound with a single byte value. Now, we're going to extend that this time with a new version called Chibi Sound Pro. Not entirely professional, but a little bit. It's designed for more complex sound effects with multiple channels, multiple volume levels, and it's designed really for music. So we're going to extend the pre previous idea of having a multi-platform driver that we could run in the same way from every system, and this is going to allow us to do music. Now, what I've done is I've written a little program I'm working on called Chibi Tracks, which is my own music player and an accompanying tracker called Chibi Tracker Pro. These two together will allow you to write your own music and play it on multiple systems, and you can export one binary file and play it on different systems, even if they're not the same CPU. So I've got a file I wrote for the Z80 Amstrad CPC, and we can play it to at least some extent on the X68000 today without even re-exporting the file. Now, how do we do this? Well, what we've basically done is we've written a hardware abstraction layer which allows our software to work in the same way on every system. So there's two parts. There's the Chibi Track software, which is common to the 68000 systems, and then there's the Chibi Sound Pro driver, and there's one version for the X68000, one version for the Atari ST, and so on. So what we have to do is we have to take in values that are the settings we want to set the channel to one of our channels and the underlying driver we're going to look at today has to deal with uh, getting that job done of setting the channel so the register d3 is going to take a single byte now seven of the bits are the channel number so in theory 0 to 127 and the top bit is the noise on and off d6 is a volume in in theory a value of 0 to 255 a single byte value there and the pitch in D2 is a 16-bit value. Now, these are 8-bit and 16-bit because this came from the Z80 systems. It's a port from the Z80. And what we're kind of doing is um, simulating an AUI sound chip, the minimal functionality of an AUI sound chip, so that we can play music. Now, on the X68000, we have an FM sound chip, and it's the YM2151, I believe. Now, this is quite a complex sound chip. Um, we can um, basically create some forms of instrument by combining different waveforms together. So uh, we have to do that, unfortunately, to get things going. And we have a variety of registers, and we're going to discuss those in a moment. These are the sound registers that control the sound hardware. Now, as I say, basically, um, each sound channel is made up of a combination of different things known as slots and these are the co combinations of frequency modulators which form the final sound so we'll need to configure multiple of them in a lot of cases to actually form our sounds now whenever we want to set the registers we have a register number and a single byte value for each of those registers and you can see the functions of the bits here now all we need to do is we write the register number to this port here here e9001 and then we write the value in a, a byte value up to E9003, and that will set to the sound register we want. Now, some of these registers are single registers, so you can see here, register is 1, 8, and so on here. These uh, There's just one register for the entire hardware system. A test register, for example, we only need one. And the key on register, it controls all the channels, but it's just a single register for all of the channels. There's some registers that are one per channel, so port, so registers 20 to 27 here are for the eight sound channels. There's eight sound channels in total, I should have said that. And this will set the feedback and connection. Now the connection is um, relating to the kind of sound we're going to make. We'll have a look at that in a moment. But as I say, these are basically one per channel. And the remaining ones, there is a total of one per slot. And there's four slots per channel. So there's 32 in total. And you'll see that these are separated by hexadecimal two zero apart because there's 32 in total. And basically, if you want to know the address of a, an individual slot for a certain channel, what you would want to do is take the register base. So for example, maybe um, let's say maybe hexadecimal 40 there. And this will be looking at the, de de the decay and multiplier there. So let's say we want to change those. So what we would do is we would take our register base of hexadecimal 40. We would then take the slot that we wanted to look at. So 0 to 3, multiply that by 8 and add the channel. So basically, if we want to change the four slots of a single channel, we would need to add 8 to move from slot 0 to slot 1 to slot 2 to slot 3. So that, that's how we could move between them. 
Now, all of these different options are quite complicated, and one of the especially complicated things is the key code, because the key code here, while this is a 4-bit value and it takes a value from 0 to 16, not all of the numbers from 0 to 15 will actually work. Some of them don't do anything, and so these are the valid numbers we can use. That's one of the um, complications. The other one is the connection, which is inputs in registers hexadecimal 20 to 27. Now, what are connectors? Well, connectors are how the various um, slots are connected together to form a sound. So you can see here we've got four slots, M1, C1, M2, and C2 here, and these can be combined in a various, various different sort of patterns to produce the final sound. And the orientation of the connection from zero to seven will alter the sound, and you can try different ones and see how they work. But of course, de depending on how the um, slots are combined together, the settings that those slots were given will have radically different uh, effects on the sound, or maybe in some cases, no effect at all. Now, all of this is a little bit complicated to say the least. I apologize for that. Now, I'm going through a beginner's introduction series at the moment, a sort of pre-assembly program, if you will, and that is going to cover music very soon, but it's also covered in my new book, Learn Multi-Platform Assembly with Chibi Echoes Volume 2. If you're interested in the common content of that, you can buy it from Amazon, but as I say, if you're not, then you will be able to see a, a detailed description of how um, FM synthesis and things like key on and key off and attack and delay work in my beginner series, which is coming soon, but we're not going to cover it here because it is such a huge topic. So what we're going to do today is we're going to try out a, a simple sample. We've got this Chibi Sound Pro test here. This will allow us to test the hardware and listen to the sounds and check our instrument is working okay that we've configured. So if we just start up our emulator here. Now you can hear there's a fairly low tone there. And if I use my joypad here, I can change the pitch by um, using the, jo the joypad setting here. And if I press the fire button, I can turn the noise on and off. Now, this is just a simple piece of test code to allow me to really configure and check the driver is working correctly. We also have this um, Chibi Tracks test. Now, the Chibi Tracks software is something I'm still just finishing off, but basically, this will allow us to play music. Now this is the um, original the Chibi Akamas theme. Now this was originally written in Arcus Tracker. I've converted the music to Chibi Tracker Pro and now it's playing through Chibi Tracks. This was done for my 10k subs video and uh, it, the exact same binary file for that video also works on this um, 68000 based system. So as I say that is really the purpose of the Chibi Sound Pro driver, and that is what we're going to look at today on the X68000. Now, the first thing um, I think it's important to understand is how we're doing the music. Now, we, we're gonna pass a pitch in the D2 register, and we're gonna pass a 16-bit value, but a, while a low pitch is specified by a low number and a high pitch is specified by a no, high number, a pitch like 32768 isn't going to sound the same on every system. It won't be remotely the same because it's going to depend on the hardware. Now, the way we get around this is we have a lookup table for the various notes in the octave. And you can see them here across the top. And we have various octaves going down this table here. There they are. And so this is a lookup table for us to select a pure tone to make the hardware play. Now, if we want a sharp or a flat, all we do is we add two of the values together. So if we wanted... Um, B sharp, if we would add 3 6 B O and 3 8 B O together and divide by 2, we can, we can get any sharp or flat by doing that, and that is how the music software is able to play the music. So um, that's what we will need to do. Now, to allow us to control the hardware, we are going to define a function called set all slots. Now, if you remember, I said that there were basically four slots per channel, and these are eight bytes apart in register numbers. So 40, 48, 50, and 58 would be the slots for a single channel in the 40 to 5F range. And so set all slots is going to do that for us. D1 is going to be the register number we want to change, and D0 is going to be the value we want to set it to. And so this is going to switch all of the all of the slots to the same value. Just a very quick setup routine that we're going to use a couple of times. We also have a, an octave remap table, and this is to cope with the fact, as I said, that uh, while our 16-bit value that we passed could have any number in it, 
um, because of the way that the X68000 only uses values 0 to 14 within the within the 4-bit range of the notes, um, we're not going to be able to use every possible value that we could possibly pass to the key code, unfortunately. And so we're going to have a lookup table to get around that problem. Finally, um, we've got a byte um, marker for the noise of each of the channels. We've got eight channels in total, but on the X68000, the noise only plays on slot 32, which is effectively the fourth slot of channel seven. So whenever we're asked to turn the noise on, we're going to remap that to channel seven. And so to to allow us to um, and to sort of keep virtual noise channels, if you will. If we're asked to turn on the noise of channel one, for example, we'll actually turn on the noise of channel seven. And when we're asked to turn the noise off of channel one, we're going to turn the noise off on channel seven. So we need to keep track of when, when we were asked to turn the noise on and off for the virtual channels. And it's always actually going to be applied to channel seven. That's how we're going to do things. That's it's what we have to do on systems that only have one noise channel or that the way we're using it only has one noise channel. OK, now the first thing we're doing as part of the initialization is we are going to set the port, the register 1B. Now 1B is a bit of an odd one. It actually controls the disk, but it also controls the amplitude and the frequency modulation. And we're going to set it to noise. Now I'm not actually sure if this makes too much difference in today's example. Um, I kept changing settings with regards to the um, noise, the feedback and things to get this, the sound that I felt best. Now I'm not going to lie, I'm no expert at this. I really have to do these things by a bit of trial and error, unfortunately. But uh, I did at least manage to get some sounds I was reasonably happy with in the end. But as I say, I'm not sure that that is actually currently used in the final state of this code. But we're going to leave it in anyway. Now, whenever we want to set a channel, we run Chibi Sound Pro set and we set D3, D6 and D2 to the volume channel and pitch as required. Now, the first thing we're doing here is we're getting the bottom three bits of the channel number. And the reason for that is we've only got eight channels from zero to seven. So we need a valid value there. Now, the top bit of D6 is actually whether the noise is on or off. Now, if the noise is now on, then we are going to set that within our channel markers. As I say, the virtual channels, we need to keep track of whether noise is on or off. So here we are setting the noise on state for the current channel. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to mute the current channel. So uh, uh, basically, so only the noise comes out of channel seven, we're muting the current channel. And so the way we're doing that is we're setting the volume bits all to one. A, a value of zero is actually the loudest on this system. And we're going to set basically slots uh, one and three, if, if you consider them to go from zero to three of this channel. So 60 plus eight is selecting a slot one. And then we're adding 16 to the register number here, and that is selecting slot three effectively. And we're muting those two because of the way the connect big, the way the slots are connected in the current configuration, that will actually mute this channel. Now, once we've done that, once we've muted the tone, we're gonna actually redirect the noise to channel seven, as I said before. So that's what we're doing there. Now, if the noise has been set off, what we want to do first is we want to check the previous state of the noise on this channel because maybe it was on before and if it was on before we now need to mute it so what we're doing there is we're checking if the noise was previously on and if it was we're clearing that marker to say that it's now off and then what we're basically going to do here is we're going to disable the noise now the single register 0f actually controls the noise as i say only always goes through channel 7 the final slot so by setting the top bit to zero, we're effectively disabling the noise. And that's that's all we need to do to turn the noise off there. And then finally, what we're doing here is we are actually silencing the channel here. So by just setting the volume to the minimum there, which is effectively silencing that channel there. And we're then running set all slots. This is basically setting all of the slots to mute there for channel seven. That's going to silence the previous noise that was playing. OK. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to check what volume we're actually being asked to play now, because if we're being asked to play at volume zero, we're actually going to mute the sound. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to actually effectively lift the key. If you think of a piano key, when you press the key down and you lift it up, we're going to lift the key up. And we've set the decay to very fast so that the sound will die away very quickly. So all we need to do to do that is we need to set all of the slot bits to zero and we need to set the channel bits to the current channel. So we've got our template there. We're then adding the channel number and we're basically going to send that to register eight. Register eight being 
the key on and effectively the key off if we run it with all the slot bits set to zero. So that would silence our sound and in that case we are now done. Okay, now if we are making a sound, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the connection. So we're going to use registers 20 onwards there. Now we connect the left and right, we set the feedback and we also select the connection type. Now the connection we're using in this case is 1 and that relates, as I said before, to our diagrams here. So we're effectively using this pattern here. A bit, a bit weird, that's what we're using though. That was the one I decided was the um, the best. So that for, for my purposes, a simple, uh, it's effectively a square wave simulation here we're doing. So that's what we're doing there. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to select a value from our lookup table. Remember, we've got this octave remap table here and we're going to take the two bytes that have been passed to us for the pitch and we're going to use the top byte to select an entry in that table and we're going to use the bottom byte for what is effectively the key fraction. The key fraction we will take six bits and pass that to registers 30 onwards but for the key code registers 28 onwards we need a value in that format there. So what we're doing here is we're going to get a value within that 96 entry table. We're going to multiply by 96 and then we're going to effectively divide by 256. So this is going to basically take a one byte value and convert it into a value from 0 to 96 here. And so what we're going to do then is we are going to select our register 28, the register we want for this channel. We're adding the channel number to register 28 because, of course, register 28 is register 28 to 2F, depending on our channel number. We're then reading in a value from our octave remap table here, and we're setting it to the key code here. We're selecting the octave number and then what we're going to do next is we're going to select the fraction. So we're using registers 30 and onwards there. Again, it's offset by the channel number. And we're taking basically the bottom byte of our pitch that we were passed and we're just keeping the top six bits there, which is what this register wants. And we're transferring that as the new value for the pitch. Okay. Now, what we've got next is a large sequence of various settings that are related to the kind of sound we're making. We're defining things like the attack, the decay, the multiplier, the detune. Now, um, basically, I've got these fixed values. We never change them for the different tones and pitches. Um, I just about managed to figure out valid values. As I say, I'm no expert on FM synthesis. Unfortunately, I have very little time to go into these kind of things in depth, but these values are at least giving a reasonable sound. So we're selecting all of these, and these are being used to combine together for the various channel slots to build the final sound. So we're using the set all slots function to set all of these fixed options here, with the exception of this last one here, which is um, common to just the channel. Now, once we've done that, we're going to set the volume. Now, the volume is a little bit weird on this system. Um, the FM synthesis one's zero is often the highest volume, and a value of one is basically half the volume, and a value of three is a quarter of the volume or something. It, it, it's very, um, it gets very quiet very quickly, unfortunately. So basically, what I'm doing here is I'm basically um, setting the bottom four bits to one here of the value we've been passed. And we, we're having to flip all the bits as well because, as I say, a volume of zero is the loudest. So this is providing us a valid value. So first what we're doing here is we're setting the volume for slot three here. And then we are basically reducing the volume a bit and we're setting the volume for slot one here. Now, why are we doing that? Well, because these two slots are the ones that actually result in the final sound. And by reducing the volume of the second slot, we're effectively um, changing the, the two combined sounds to make a tone that I felt was more pleasant and gave a better bass representation. I found if I, if I had them both at maximum volume, it was much um, a much harsher sound. So this, this, I felt, gave a better sound. Now, the final thing we're going to do here for our normal tones is we're going to turn it, the sound on. Again, we with uh, register 8, which is key on, we use that for silencing it, but we also use it for turning the channel on. The only difference is the slots that we enable. Now we're enabling these slots here, and this will effectively make the sound. Now we're adding the channel number again, and this is turning our sound on. Now if we're not making a noise, we are now done. But if we are making a noise, there's a few things we've got to do last of all. So basically what we're going to do here is we are going to actually turn on those noise bits here. So what we're doing here is we're selecting the noise register here. 
we are taking the top byte of our noise frequency and we're shifting it so that the five top bits are in the right position and we're alling in the top bit because the top bit is the enable bit so that's got to be one and we're sending that value to set the register 0f here which as I say is the common noise which is um, there's only one setting but it actually comes out of um, channel 7 so we, we need to make sure that our volume and things are set for channel 7 to have the resulting effect anyway there we go so that is all we have to do it's quite a lot we have to do unfortunately to get the sound working for today's example um, I mean personally as a sort of beginner at this kind of thing I find much simpler systems far more pleasant you know the AY sound chip is all I'm really capable of musically so um, this is excessive for me but here it is and as I so say you're welcome to go to my website download the source go to the build scripts have a go with it yourself and if you find any of it useful you know make whatever you can of it uh, you're welcome to do so anyway hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today thanks for watching and goodbye <laughs>